Welcome to the Cantina Chatter Podcast. Turn up your nostalgia. everyone, and welcome back. I'm Victoria, your host here on the Cantina Chatter Podcast, your resource for new and retro toys, pop culture, and randomness from the 80s and 90s. Well, my friends, it is nice to be back here on Cantina Chatter. I think it's been... It's been about a month, maybe a little over a month since we had our last episode and things have been really busy uh, with work, super, super busy, working long hours, getting home and uh, just not having the energy to (laughs) do a whole lot. And uh, on top of that, a couple weeks back, I got sick and, uh, you know, had a cold that was very persistent and I'm kind of still getting over to some extent. So... Uh, Just a lot going on. Even on the channel, things have been a little bit uh, slow over the last few weeks. Uh, That's all going to change. I've got a lot in the pipeline, not only for Cantina Chatter, but also for the YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. There's more episodes of Collect Jurassic World. There's more episodes of Discovery Land on tap. Lots of good stuff. As always, I appreciate you tuning in to Cantina Chatter. And uh, this is going to be a fun one. Um, We're continuing the Star Wars Modern Toy Line Retrospective. It's been a couple months since we did the last one, focusing on the Clone Wars micro series line with Adam Paulus. This time we're going to be joined by Jason from yakface.com, one of my favorite Star Wars collecting websites. And we got a lot to talk about. One of my favorite toy lines that Hasbro has done for Star Wars, the original trilogy collection, also known as the OTC. It's one of those lines that had, you know, just amazing packaging, some really great figures. And, uh, you know, some nostalgia at this point, because that was 15 years ago. And just thinking back to what was going on in my life at the time. And uh, yeah, it's it's hard to believe it was that long ago. But it's also really cool that, uh, you know, we get to talk about and reminisce about the OTC uh, with Jason. I'm sure he's got some really fun stories to share about this line. And I'm really excited to talk about it as well. So also wanted to note that in the next episode, we will be focusing on more Star Wars. Uh, we will be talking about what it's like to sell off your Star Wars collection. A friend of mine in the Star Wars collecting community is uh, selling off his collection. So I want to talk to him about what that's like. And we'll also be talking about Star Wars television in that episode. And we'll also be talking Star Wars toy reveals for Force Friday. So lots of good stuff on tap. And um, I have some other episodes planned out for the coming months. So uh, lots of great stuff on the way, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. It's been about a year and a half since he was last on the show, Back when we were last talking about our hopes and dreams for the return of Star Wars The Vintage Collection in early 2018, uh, I'm thrilled to welcome back to Cantina Chatter, Jason from yakface.com. Hello, Victoria. Thanks for having me on again. It's really great to have you on once again, Jason. Uh, I assume everyone tuning into these episodes already knows, but you do manage one of the best resources for Star Wars toy and collectible news on the web, yakface.com. So how have things been going with the site? It's been busy as of late. Um, you know, we're getting close to that Force Friday uh, movie release time, so I've been busy tracking down hidden and unannounced merchandise. So it's been uh, it's been a busy few months. You know, trying to mm. decipher who's who and what wave is what and how many of each figure in each wave. You know, it's been you know going all over the internet from. Uh, online, mo- most of the stuff I do find is all public resources, nothing, nothing uh, uh-huh. 
off limits or secret per se, you know, um, yeah. using things like BrickSeek or online distributors, you know, from domestic or overseas, or I've gone so far as to being able to find shipping manifests, you know, that, um, that Hasbro uses, mm-hmm. you know, to ship things from China or Vietnam yeah. to the U S I've been able to find manifests that lists what is in the containers <laughs> from these ships. <laughs> so it's, it's been kind of fun. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt in a way. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And, uh, and, and it's not just for Star Wars. A lot of people do this for different toy lines. Like my friend Chris from Jurassic Outpost is really big on using the same kinds of resources to find information on new Jurassic World toys. So mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of information you can find if you do a little bit of digging around. So that's pretty cool. Right. Yeah, I know you put a lot of work into the side and you're constantly churning out news for upcoming toys. So uh, on behalf of the collecting community, thanks for all that you do. My pleasure. So this Star Wars Modern Toy Line retrospective started in January, and we've been working our way from the past to the present. Uh, Right now, we're on the original trilogy collection, which is one of my favorite lines from the past 24 years. Uh, It was a fun, somewhat contained line. Uh, It does have a lot of assortments, uh, and it produced some some really great toys. Uh, But before we get into the toys, I want to talk a little bit about why this toy line actually came to pass. And that was in the fall of 2004 when Lucasfilm released the Star Wars original trilogy for the very first time on DVD. Um, So what are your memories of the trilogy on DVD at that time? Um, geez, um, I, DVD, I, I'm trying to place, <laughs> I mean, it seems so long, I mean, it, it, it seems like forever ago, and then like yesterday at the same time, Right. it's like, everything is coming out on different media, you know, we're getting, you know, which cut is it going to be? Is it going to be the, <laughs> you know, the unaltered version? Is it going to be the, you know, d- de-specialized edition? You know, there's so many different editions, and, uh-huh. you know, up until that point we everyone had like 10 different copies on vhs it's like what's going to make this you know they always threw one extra special uh, behind the scenes thing or whatever on that so you just you, you're obligated to buy it just so you had that video right you know digital record of you know whatever they were releasing that time but um i'm trying to think what did the packaging look like for that was that the half vader helmets back then uh, no what no, was I, that? I think that was uh that was a special edition wasn't it in 97 the vhs um gosh you know oh, what yeah 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 i don't even remember i'm gonna have to look <laughs> it up yeah. real quick it's like you said it's kind of a long time ago but it's also kind of like yesterday but um yeah i gotta look it up my memory is uh i, I used to know all this stuff like it would be instantaneous but sometimes now i gotta look it up right and, it, and like you mentioned before, you know, there's there were it's kind of like a self-contained line, but it also had like a, a, a lot of different assortments, like you said, from mm-hmm. exclusives. And, you know, we we got the the debut of the vintage style figures. So, you know, and that carries on till this day. So, yeah, it's it was one of those turning points for the line in a lot of ways. Absolutely. And it looks like it was actually a a case that had all three DVDs in it. And then it had, uh, it was silver and black and it has like Luke Skywalker, Leia, R2 and 3PO on the the front of it. That's right. The embossed logo Mm -hmm. type deal. And yeah, yeah, the other set actually does have Vader's helmet on there. You are right about that. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, interesting. It's been a while since I've seen this. I think at one point um they released their best buy like a, a tin set i think it was maybe like a year or two later and it had like the laser disc versions unaltered uh, right on additional dvds and i think i got that one later and I, that replaced this set for me so i think that's kind of what i remember a little bit more but yeah this was the first time that these films were on dvd and it was a big deal because i mean now you know it's all about blu-ray and digital but you know, back in 2004, I mean, DVD was like, you know, the prime like form of home video. And uh, it was all about, you know, getting, you know, video, you know, movies on DVD. And that's what they did with these. It was the first time to get the saga in that way. And uh, like you said, it did have some pretty cool features on it. I think one of them was Empire of Dreams, which was uh, this mm-hmm. really big documentary. It was an awesome documentary. Yeah, it was funny. My uh, brother-in-law was just commenting the other day that he had picked that. I, I think he could watch it like on amazon or netflix or something i can't remember which video service it's on right now but he's uh-huh. he just watched it recently and he forgot how good that was 
<laughs> nice. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time. I should probably check it out again pretty soon here. But uh, yeah, I remember going to Walmart at midnight to pick it up. Uh, I was living in San Antonio, Texas at the time. And uh, quite a few other people were, were doing the same thing. I wasn't the only one. So uh, they had a few changes made. These were the special editions, but they had done a couple additional things to the films. Um, like they used the episode one version of Jabba to replace the really awful CGI model from 97. Mm -hmm. um, that really stands out to me. Uh, they had Ian McDiarmid as the Emperor in Empire Strikes Back. And uh, maybe the most infamous of all, they replaced Sebastian Shaw with Hayden Christensen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I personally like these changes. Uh, I know there were a few other minor changes, too. Like, they fixed some of the lightsabers and some of the audio. But right. uh, I think for the most part, they did a pretty good job. What were your feelings on those changes? At first, they came as a shock, obviously. It was something <laughs> that, we didn't unex that we didn't expect, you know, especially the, the Hayden Christensen switch out. But, uh, no, I think it improved the film overall from, you know, it you know, fix like matte lines and mm -hmm. um, different weird transparency things going on with the windows and Empire Strikes Back, I think. Um, so I, yeah, it, overall, it was, a, again, an improvement. And it just made things more consistent, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, at this point in time, I don't see any reason to go back to those 97 versions, like after you have like the DVD. So it's like, just doesn't make sense to me. Right. Um, so the OTC line, uh, original trilogy collection, started hitting in, I think it was, was it like late spring, early summer 2004? Yeah, I, I think that's that sounds right. You know, they kind of, did they have it tied around, you know, the May the 4th thing? Was was that around mm -hmm. that time? I'm. Yeah, I don't recall. I'd have to go back um, through my archives and see when. Yeah, I don't think May the, like, I don't, just thinking back, I feel like May the 4th, is, that's more like, Maybe like the last 10 years that that really became more of a thing, but yeah. I, I could be wrong. Um, but as I noted earlier, it was meant to tie in with uh, the DVD release. So it included uh, the, the OTC, which was like the main line, uh, the VOTC, which was the vintage original trilogy collection that was a separate assortment. And then later in going into late 2004, early 2005, there was the, the post original trilogy collection as it was referred to the POTC. Uh, or uh, at the time, I often got confused with that in Pirates of the Caribbean. But <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this was the first time in the modern toy line that Hasbro released Star Wars figures on vintage style Kenner cards. And at the time, they were billed as being these highly detailed collector focused figures. And I think they cost $10 compared to the main OTC line. I think those were about $5, yep. uh, depending on where you bought them. So how did you feel at the time when Hasbro brought back the iconic packaging? Um, it was... It was really great. I mean, the, you know, they came in those clam shells that had the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the foil uh, insert, and mm -hmm. it just kind of, it, it brought another level to action figure. You know, this up until that point, figures weren't super articulated, really, um, and it had the combination of the the soft goods, like for Luke and Obi Wan, and it just it really set the line apart. And I mean, by today's standards, uh, you know, $10 for these things, you know, we pay $10 for the most basic of figures <laughs> nowadays. Um, but this was, this was really great. The, the change and the, the, the clamshell that was included. Yeah. And initially I think, weren't those like really hard to open? Like they were like super heat sealed closed. Oh, yeah, I think, I think so. Right. And then did they start taping them later? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what, yeah. <laughs> so you basically ruined them if you opened them <laughs> when they were heat sealed. Um, but I was born towards the tail end of the vintage line. So I never got to experience those original Kenner cards on the shelves. So for me, seeing the VOTC was especially cool because I recognized how iconic the look was and, as a younger collector at the time, I appreciated being able to have the opportunity to, you know, get a sense for that aesthetic on the shelves. And it wasn't just the VOTC, like the entire OTC line had a very classic look to it, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the black and the silver packaging. And they also had these really cool backgrounds on most of the figures that gave them this sort of diorama kind of look. Yep. And I think to this day, that's still probably one of the best looks Hasbro has done for it uh, because it combined old and new. Yeah, it, it didn't rely on movie stills per se. I mean, it was, like you said, there were backgrounds from the film, whether it be Tatooine or Endor. Or, um, it, it just made 
the figure pop that much more uh-huh. instead of it just being behind like a colored background or something generic. It was a scene from the film and it really set the figure in the scene almost. It was like mm-hmm. a little mini diorama and you didn't even have to open it. Right. Yeah. Awesome presentation. And uh, I think it was it in Canada or maybe in Europe where they didn't have the diorama background, but they had like a, like a white starburst. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm spacing on that one. Um, but I, I do recall there, there was a generic card back. I don't exactly remember what the style was, but it does sound right from your description. Yeah. I think it was the same starburst, like, um, model that they used on the, on the saga line too. It was just like that white, like explosion. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, so the, the overall style of these card backs for the OTC was basically the same as Saga. It's just like they kind of, you know, they, they use the same overall shape. It was slightly different, but, um, you know, they changed it to the, the more classic black and uh, white look, black and silver. And um, from what I recall, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, um, Saga was actually supposed to run longer. It was actually one of the longest running lines. It went from 2002 to 2004. Mm-hmm. And uh, it might be one of the biggest lines that Hasbro ever did uh, for, for Star Wars. I'm not, maybe it was. Um, but I think it was supposed to continue running. But then when they got word that the DVDs were going to come out, they they kind of you know put that on hold. And then they switched over to OTC. Was that your impression as well? Yeah. Um, you might remember too that you know, there was a lot of repacks in this assortment of, of the basic figures. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the newer figures came later, but you know, I'd say seventy five percent of the of the OTC line was was repacks. Right, and I think even the very last wave of Saga, which was like Endor Han, General Lando, and General Nadine, I think. Yep. Um, I, I never saw that last wave in, at retail, but then when they repacked them in in OTC, I did find those. Um, but yeah, so that, that was, it was a good thing they did that. Cause at the time, you know, it was, they were impossible to find. Um, yeah, but, there was like that, that hall of fame assortment for the, for the saga mm, line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they did repack a lot of those in OTC. That's true. Yeah. So, um, for our listeners, we're both looking at the rebel scum photo archive. Uh, do you have the link for that? I do. I'm got it up right now okay cool so this is for the original trilogy collection i've heard that it's fun to follow along for some collectors uh while they're listening so i will place the link in the show notes so let's go over some of the assortments for the otc line so um, we've been talking a bit about the basic figures and how that evolved from the saga line so um just taking a look here at the pictures on rebel scum site um it wasn't a huge line like i said it was pretty contained it was kind of meant to coincide with this dvd release um, but they got a lot of the main characters out. They got some of the, the background characters that are a little more prominent in the original trilogy out. And um, like you said, a lot of these were repacks of previously released figures. Correct. Yeah, so that very first wave, I think this was probably the best wave of, of uh, OTC because I yeah. think these were like pretty much like the brand new figures of the way of the whole OTC, really. Um, but they had Luke Skywalker, Dagobah training, Yoda, Dagobah. Uh, spirit of Obi Wan, which I still think to this day in three and three quarter inch, that's probably the best like spirit figure they've done. Mm-hmm. And then uh, electronic R two D two, you know, Dagobah with all the mud on him. Uh, that was a really exciting wave when it came out. I think it was like set August September two thousand four. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, that Luke in particular having the interchangeable arms i think um and, and the different heads they had two heads and as right. i recall you if you found it in the store you might find it in one or one of two configurations one where he's holding the uh, the backpack and then the other one where he's doing the handstand which was freaking incredible yep that was an ingenious way to handle that i mean that back when the variants were intentional you know like you know they weren't errors for the most part uh-huh. yeah And what was kind of also cool about this, you know, it came with these environmental bases, which we saw kind of carry over the following year when uh, Revenge of the Sith came out, when some of those figures, they came with, you know, environmental bases Mm, from mm -hmm. Felucia or uh, Mustafar. So, and they interlocked, which was also awesome. Yeah, those were great. And they were very detailed as well. They looked like real mud, basically, mm-hmm. with logs and stuff. And yeah, th- those were great. Oh, yeah, the handprints were Luke, so you could stand him up on his hands, which he didn't need his base to do that. But it was really cool that, you know, you could do that if you wanted to. 
Yep. Um, and then, of course, you know, Yoda being able to put him in the backpack, like you could split his body in half and plug him into the backpack. That was pretty brilliant. Yeah, I like that one as well. Um, they seem to get the scale really right for that. I mean, it looks when you split him in half and you put him inside the backpack, he looks like that should work, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I know that they redid these. I think was it like 2015 or you know sometime in there in in the Black Series, the three quarter inch. Mm-hmm. Um, they redid both of those stickers, but I don't know. I kind of feel like in a way that maybe you know these 2004 versions are maybe somewhat superior in, in a few ways. Yep, kind of yeah. the first the first generation of that because they're almost pre-posed, you know, like with especially that Luke having the two different arm styles, you know, he, there's no articulation in the elbows, but they they come with the two um the two sets, so uh-huh. it expanded the play of those yeah. of those figures obviously. Absolutely. And um yeah, as I noted, that Obi-Wan too, um just the way they they did the spirit effect on him. I don't know. Like since then, I think we've gotten spirit of Anakin uh in in 2007, I think. Uh, right. 2008 but um yeah like i don't know i kind of feel like the way they tackle this particular obi one is still like kind of like the standout in three and three quarter inch for a spirit type figure right and you know if you kind of fast forward to the black series of of today for that obi-wan that was exclusive to walgreens it does have that similar feel with the like the pearlescent look mm-hmm. yeah so. yeah that's that's a good point uh and um and R2, this was pretty much, I think, maybe one of the same R2s we'd been seeing quite a bit around that time, the electronic mm-hmm. one, but he had all the mud on him this time for Dago. But right. it, it's a really nice, like, paint scheme when you look at the figure. It's, like, really detailed. Yep. So after that, I think pretty much uh, the entire, the rest of the entire <laughs> line was mostly repacks. I think looking here at the pictures, uh, Lobot was, was new, I think, wasn't he? Lobot, uh, the Bespin Leia. Okay, yeah, Bespin Leia. Um, uh, Snow Trooper, I think, was like a kid bash, wasn't it? Or was right. that a straight? Okay. Or was that, maybe I'm thinking of the 2006 one that was a kid bash. I don't remember. Yeah, they all, they had, I think, the depending on the leg pose, I think that was what kind of, th- was there the one that came with the cannon that? Yeah. Was that 2004, 2006? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> Let's click on the figure here and <laughs> and see. Like I said, uh, this was a while back, but... um. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, this, uh, yeah, this one did have the cannon. So it looks like this one was uh, a repaint of the 2003 Saga version, and it looks like it is a slight repaint, like the arms and the legs look to be a little darker. Mm -hmm. Um, But other than that, it's basically the same figure. So, yeah, I guess it was actually the 2006 one that was like a kit bash, but... um, yeah, that was a fun one. Like when you when you talk about like bang for your buck, like this figure right here, like today would cost probably like fifteen dollars or more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a good one. And Lobot, we haven't had him in the line since then, and uh, right. he still holds up pretty well. Pretty limited in our articulation, but uh, I think for the most part, he still holds up fairly well. Yep. Uh, other new figures in here. I think the rest were repaints. I think that, that uh, let's see, there's the Echo Base Vader. I think that was a repaint, wasn't it, of a previous Vader figure? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that one was like the Power of the Jedi, I want to say, Emperor's Wrath. Yeah, that had the uh, removable, was it the helmet that came off, or the head that came off? Yeah, that one, maybe or the was hand, the too. Oh, wait, yeah, no, that was, yeah, I think it was the, the hand. I don't know if the whole... Did the whole head come off? It's possible. Maybe oh, no, no. I think I'm of... thinking of the Power of the Jedi, Dig of the Vader. Right. Yeah. When, when you have hundreds of figures, probably <laughs> thousands, like, you're like, okay, was it this one or was it that one? Um, so you'll have to forgive us if we're going back and forth just a little bit. They all but, do um, blend together. Yeah. Especially back then, it was just like a constant drip of figures for years, nonstop. Um Okay, so there was also the Cloud Car Pilot. Was that a new figure for this? Yeah, I don't recall ever. I mean, other than the vintage one, yeah. that was, that yeah, was think, new. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, and I do have this one in my, my Cloud Car. Uh, along, I think the vintage collection one is in one cockpit, and in the other one, it's this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, yeah, so pretty much everything else was was repainted or repackaged. We mentioned some of those Hall of Fame figures earlier. Some of those are in here, like Han, Leia, uh, the Stormtrooper, Chewbacca. And those were all like Power of the Force figures. So, 
yeah, those weren't really anything special at that point. But I think one of the things that makes them special is the the packaging. Like we said, you had those background um, shots that really made them look like little dioramas. So uh, that was really cool. Mm-hmm. The Greedo was different because there were the uh, it had like the bloody uh, gunshot wound to the chest. Oh right, right. Yeah, that Greedo I think is um, is one of the more impressive ones. Like it just feels like a very film accurate like coloration. Like I think even to this day they haven't quite gotten one quite as close as this one. Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones as well. Yeah, absolutely, and. Uh, the Gamorrean guard was was painted a little more detailed than he was in Power of the Force. So, and same with the Jawas; like they have a much like richer like paint scheme. Right, and again, getting two for one in that pack, you know, mm-hmm. we just don't get that thing that that, that kind of a thing nowadays. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know a lot of people don't like that Boba Fett, the Pit of Carcoon Boba that has the you know the flames, but I always thought that was great the way that they did mm-hmm. that figure. Yeah, nice additional chunk of plastic yeah and i think that this one was slightly repainted i want to say from yep from the originals um yeah so i mean quite a few repaints uh oh i think another one that stands out too is uh the best spin luke because we did get that one like a year or two before but that one had like you know the battle worn sort of look to him this one's like an all clean like version of best spin luke right did this one still have the magnetic wrist i don't think it did Um, yeah Wait, let's look at the picture. Yeah, actually, it does. <laughs> it does oh, yeah. have a magnet. But, but it doesn't have the bloody stump. That no. was one of the... Oh, yeah, that was one of the big, like, variant things in 2002. Yeah. Um, there was the, the plastic peg, there was the, the bloody stump, and then there was the magnet <laughs> version. All right, so let's go ahead and look at... Uh, we'll move on to the Vintage Original Trilogy Collection, the VOTC. As I noted, these were $10, something that uh, I'm sure we would welcome in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Um, but despite the fact that they were kind of promoted as being more collector oriented figures, a lot of them haven't aged that well. And even back then, some of them were a little bit lackluster. Um, so let's talk about that very first wave. So the first wave was uh, a new hope and it had Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, and Ben Kenobi. And, uh, these were hyper or at the time, super articulated, you know, quote unquote versions of these figures um what what do you think about this very first wave at the time uh, how did, how are you receptive to these um i think the soft goods hurt the look of them i think the because of the material that they use like obi-wan looks like he <laughs> he's got a huge huge bathrobe on or something it just does not look you know the, the weight of the material is just too thick he's very plush <laughs> looking um yeah and <laughs> I think a lot of people, who, you know, who've done toy photography, uh, they enjoyed posing the shirtless Luke in various oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> poses because he was, you know, you could remove his uh, his soft goods, and it, it's just uh, seeing that much articulation on a bare chested Luke was very humorous at the time i remember uh, <laughs> yeah that um, was that was nuts we didn't have articulation like that back then it was just like it was like crazy right just like the different torso joints and it was yeah it was, it was odd looking yeah i still think <laughs> still. that's probably the best luke to have in the land speeder though right yeah and then yeah i agree about obi-wan it just like like a giant bathrobe and i never really thought the head on that one was that great mm-hmm um, Han, on the other hand, I think that one, I mean, I know that this is probably like the last time that they really like updated Han. They've done a few since then, but they've all kind of been based on this sculpt. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of feel like that's still, sadly, really the definitive Han Solo in the three and three quarter inch line. Yeah. I mean, just give him, you know, what they're doing nowadays is the, uh, the photo reel faces. I mean, you could, mm-hmm. you could give this one a new head sculpt and it would still hold up very well yeah it would still it would still be pretty nice uh and then leia um that one i kind of have like i go back and forth on at the time i thought it was a cool figure i've always thought like her face looked a little too cutesy or something yeah the rouge yeah yeah she's got a lot of blush on her cheeks and (laughs) yeah very very doll like um Mm -hmm. but you know again quite sadly this is still kind of the definitive three quarter inch leia right 
I think the, the one that I like more than this one is the uh, the Comtech one. Mm. I think that's the one yeah. where she's got the hood up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they haven't redone this figure, uh, you know, really in, in like the last like 10 years. Like you really would have thought, well, any of them really, right? I mean, they haven't really, I mean, maybe Obi-Wan in Legacy Collection, but even that one could stand to be updated at this point. Yep. So after this wave, there was the uh, Empire Strikes Back. It has Darth Vader, uh, C-3PO, Yoda, and Lando Calrissian. Uh, for me, this was a kind of a mixed bag. I thought at the time Vader was pretty great because, again, we didn't have articulation like that up to that point. Um, but then you have figures like 3PO, which was basically like a 5POA figure, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just has such a weird-looking head. Like, the bottom part of his, like, jaws, like, really, like, like, I don't know, like shrunken in or something. Yeah, he's oddly proportioned. He's like extra lanky. And the weird, uh-huh. you know, pre-posed bends <laughs> that he has in his legs, it's just, he's not standing straight. It's no. just, he's hard to it, stand. The finish is nice with uh, vac metal eyes and dirty weathering. It's, uh-huh. and the, the card that they put him on is, is odd as well. Right. But, yeah, that's true. Uh, Yoda, um, what do you think about this Yoda? Because I, you know, at the time they also had for five dollars the you know OTC Yoda, Dagobah Yoda, and I felt like that was a better figure than this one. Yeah, the this the soft goods is, is again is still a little thick for his for his robe, but it it's a nice figure overall. I still do kind of like that that one. Yeah, I guess it's the, something about the face, like the eyes or something, just like a little strange. <laughs> it's really squinty. But he does have the snake, so, you know, there's that. Yep. And then Lando, again, this was the last time they really updated Lando in, in this classic Bespin costume. And uh, sadly, um, I imagine this may have been the case for years as well, but uh, a lot of these Lando figures, like, turned yellow over the years. Yep. Yeah, so it's that's pretty unfortunate that that happened because, you know, not only have they not updated this figure, but if you still have it, then, you know, it might be yellow, which uh, is never a good thing. But that aside, I think it's a pretty decent looking figure. Yeah, they did. a. I think the cape really sells it. I mean, it's again, it's kind of thick, but it's t- the two different fabrics that are stitched together to give it the, the texture on the inside. They did a good job with with that one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a nice figure. Uh, for the the third wave, uh, Return of the Jedi. So you have Chewbacca, R two D two, Boba Fett, and Stormtrooper. Now this this Chewy figure, they've really gotten their money's worth on it multiple <laughs> times over. Like Darth Vader, we we've seen this you know over and over and over again over the last fifteen years. Um, uh, to this day, basically the, the the Chewbacca that just came out of Vintage Collection isn't it mostly based on this figure? Yeah, yeah. At the time, it was a great figure. And, you know, honestly, I think it still holds up pretty well. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't mind seeing, like, a slightly updated Chewie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, no, it's a nice one. It's based on Return of the Jedi, so his hair on, on top of his head is very accurate. Uh, Boba Fett, I think this was the very first, uh, like, soup, like highly articulated Boba Fett figure that they did. And um, what were your thoughts on this one back then? Um I like this one uh, because it's the Return of the Jedi colors. I like that one. Um, it was odd. The blaster doesn't quite go with that particular deco. Um, mm-hmm. But but overall, it's it's nice having that Return of the Jedi. We, we did. Yeah. This was another one of those, you know, where they go to the well several times for right. this particular. <laughs> figure we we received it quite a few times so again it's overall it's it's nice yeah it is nice and for whatever reason i'm, I'm a more of a fan of the uh the return of the jedi look for boba fett i don't, I don't really know why it just i don't know it, it appeals to me a little bit more um but yeah that figure still holds up for the most part I, I think over the years the biggest problem i've had with this one is that the antenna gets kind of like bent um but uh, no, other than that, it holds up pretty well. His, his arms are a little awkward with holding the gun, too. But um, all right, so R2-D2. Um, I think they reused this one several times as well, didn't they? Yep. Whether they had the panels glued on or um, or removable, 
but yeah, they went to the well several times on this sculpt over the years. Right. And also the Stormtrooper, same thing. Um, this was an awesome figure back in 2004. Like today, now that we have like the, the San Diego Comic Con Stormtrooper. Oh, it doesn't look so good next to it. <laughs> yep. Uh, or, or I'm thinking of Stormtrooper Luke, but the Rogue One Stormtrooper figure, if you compare them side yeah. by side, they're absolutely different. Yep. Yeah, it's like night and day. But back then, like this was the Stormtrooper. Yeah, I think I've got like a, I don't know how many I have. I, you know, this was the, this was the one to army build, if you could find them. Yeah, yeah. No, they were hard to find. Um, several of these were actually pretty hard to find. Uh, I think it was mostly like the first wave and also like Toys R Us. I remember like that Lando, like they had him for like a year after his release. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, the post original trilogy collection set of figures. So this wave, um, or it might be a couple waves actually came out um, following the original trilogy collection. So it was kind of one of those waves that wasn't really technically part of OTC, but uh, the packaging was somewhat was basically the same, so it kind of gets lumped into that assortment um, or you know that that collection. So yep. some of these were uh, repurposed figures, um, but most of them were like brand new, uh, especially the first couple waves. And I think that these are still to this day some of the finest figures that Hasbro have done up to this point. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Um- and so, you know the only representation of these figures exists in this small subset. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this these are some great figures. To spend, you know, the, those three Cantina aliens oh, yeah. are are like you don't need better articulation or better versions of these figures. They're they're what they're fifteen years old and they're they they look just as good today as anything produced. They absolutely totally agree um yeah all three of them and and they sit you know like if you have the bar stools or you know the even the pop-up diorama that has like the cardboard seats mm-hmm. um these guys can sit pretty well and yeah they're absolutely detailed like the mayo figure i think that's his name mayo um yep. in particular i think is like the standout like cantina alien of that of that wave like just gorgeous figure you know, beautifully sculpted highly detailed very freaky looking but really awesome too <laughs> Mm-hmm. And then uh, Feltipern Trevag, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Danik Jericho. The only thing I don't like about him is that he's got those, I think they're like proboscises or something that come out of his cheeks, which, you know, if you pull right. him out to make him film accurate, he's got holes in his cheeks. Yeah. So that that's a little weird. But other than that, I mean, I don't, I doubt we're ever going to see these figures again. Yeah, it's... We're we're well beyond this level of uh, background characters nowadays. <laughs> yeah, those those are astonishingly good figures, and um, I think the the other wave had some really nice ones too. So there's Pablo Jill, and they've redone they've redone him since then. But uh, at the time, even though this is kind of more of a little statue, uh, it's it's still a really nicely sculpted figure. Mm-hmm. And uh, Yarua, um, the Wookie. Uh, so this is a Wookiee Senator. I think at that point, um, we had only had Chewbacca, I want to say. There weren't any other Wookiees uh, when this one came out. There might have been. There was the one that came from a game. Mm, mm-hmm. He was like on a little, he was blister packed. I can't remember what game it was that he came with, but it was, mm-hmm. I can't even remember the guy. It started with a W. Yeah, I, I think I know which one you're talking about. Um, I don't remember what that Walru was from. Walru or something, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, all these Wookiees have great names. Yeah. Um, yeah, but no, this was a cool one. And uh, yeah, Coruscant Senate. So that was a nice one to have. And um, I kind of remember hearing that it was maybe meant intended for like an earlier line, but they just didn't get him out until, you know, the POTC. Hmm. Um, and then there was also one of my favorites, um, uh, Sly Moore, who's, uh, you know, Palpatine's, like, I guess one of his, I don't know, what would you even call her? Because she's not really a senator. She's more of like an, maybe an advisor or. Yeah. Some sort of informant or. Yeah. This goon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's another character they're never going to do again. But. Um, even though she's very limited in articulation, I think that she's like a gorgeous looking figure. Right. The over 
not overcoat. It's, you know, kind of like a sh- cape type deal. It's yeah. really ornately sculpted and it's got a cool two tone texture pattern coloration, you know, with the light and dark wash to it. It's, it's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. And then, um, let's see, they did, uh, Queen Amidala in a celebration ceremony outfit. I think this was, was another standout. Um, she's also got that pearlescent look to her, to her gown and she's got the little globe of peace. And, um, I've always really liked this one as well. I mean, the face is a little funny, but it's still a nice figure. Yeah. The, uh, what was kind of interesting about that, uh, this, you know, we'll get to the, our favorites. This is one of my favorites that, that particular Amidala because of the pearlescent look to her, uh, dress, but she comes with that, that globe of peace and it comes apart into two pieces Ah, huh, does it yeah huh i don't know that i've ever noticed that yeah if you look at the back of her card you can see that she's holding just ah, part of it in yeah. her hand Interesting. it's not really advertised very well but it's got but it does split apart into two pieces oh, wow i i've learned something new about this figure that i never knew <laughs> Yeah, that's incredible. I'm going to have to try that as soon as we we, we finish recording here. <laughs> sure. I love that. Um, and then there was Rabe, who was one of the handmaidens. I've never really liked this one. I don't know what you think. Um, I, I always wanted several. You know, she did kind of have her little uh, entourage of decoys. Yeah. Even though, you know, if you, if you army built her per se, you know, it's, it's the same character. But it it would look great as you know have you know four or five of those around the queen yeah yeah i agree with that i think for me maybe it's mostly like the face it just looks really strange and uh yeah it's because it's because of how it's painted you know it's obviously it's cast in the the red plastic and it's uh, the painted face you never quite get the crispness of those lines at least back then Uh for some of those undercuts and the deep deeper inset part of the sculpt it just doesn't quite right yeah, yeah it definitely look right. looks um like it's from another time um but you know it still has a nice look to the costume like the the colors they they kind of stand yeah. out um and then the rest of the figures in the potc i think were were mostly like uh, repacks weren't they yeah the chewbacca again the the han from the the, the comtech han you know for the thousandth time <laughs> that one came out it seems like yeah um, oh, again yeah. with the yoda in the Bespin or uh, Dagobah Luke. Yeah, they got their money's worth with uh, those, and I think my dog's gonna start start barking here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and look at some of the other assortments that were in the OTC. Um, so it looks like there were a few, uh, or at least they're lumped in on Rebel Scum uh, exclusive figures. Uh, we'll just touch on a couple real quick. So one of the things that was pretty big at the time were was they were doing these silver like repaints of a lot of the main characters. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's Darth Vader, who's a silver uh, Darth Vader figure. It looks like this was a Toys R Us exclusive in 2004. Um, from what it says here, and I mean, I don't remember this at this point, but it says that it was $9.99 or free with a $19.99 purchase. Yep, I remember that. Yeah, uh, we didn't have Toys R Us in my hometown, so I never got that one. <laughs> Um, I think they did a clone trooper though, like a year later or something. And I was able to, to get some of, of those. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, let's see what else. So there's the, uh, the holographic Emperor Palpatine. And this one I always thought looked really nice on the packaging. Yeah, this was this one and <clears throat> the, the Leia, they both really come across well mm. with that, with yeah. that background that you can kind of see through the figure. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. And, um, yeah, so this was a Comic Con, the Leia Comic Con 2005, and then Palpatine was a StarWarsShop.com exclusive. Do you remember StarWarsShop.com? <laughs> I do. I think I I probably have my original uh, receipt still from you know oh, th- wow. that would be packed in the box for some of these things. It's like I I, I never throw anything away. It seems like, and this I totally remember getting this and ordering it. And uh-huh. That whole Star Wars Shop experience. Yeah, how funny. Um, there's Holiday Edition Darth Vader. Uh, this is also a StarWarsShop.com exclusive. And it basically, the packaging on this one is really cool. It's it's kind of the OTC look, but instead of silver, the Star Wars lettering and border is in red. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is this is a great one. I still have this one. I, I loved all those like holiday themed Star Wars figures. Um, and who wouldn't want a red Darth Vader? Right. Based off of the Macquarie Christmas card, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, uh, okay, so there's also the 500th edition uh, Darth Vader. And this was, was this a Walmart exclusive? Um, or was this everywhere? I don't think, I don't, I don't think it was Walmart. Okay, it might have been like a general release, but I, I kind of tend to remember seeing them mostly at Walmart, at least. But um, yeah, so this was basically to commemorate 500 figures. I don't know if it was the 500th figure because, you know, it, it's kind of really hard to say, but um, it, it had kind of a, a meditation chamber type packaging. And really it only, I mean, it kind of had the top part, but it was just like where the dome comes down on his head. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was basically more, mostly like half of the meditation chamber. Um, but yeah, this was an interesting one. I, I kind of feel like they could have done a little bit of a better job with that, but, uh, it's not bad. It's, you know, it's, it's unique. Yeah. It was, it was a cool, a cool presentation for the time. Yeah. Um, okay. So going beyond, uh, exclusives, uh, multi-pack. So, okay. Some of these multi-packs were released, uh, for, for years, Walmart did these commemorative sets where every time like a, a DVD or a new, um, I guess it was mostly DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff. They would release these commemorative packs, and they were really good deals because for for ten dollars you could get these three packs or these four packs of um, you know different basic figures, and uh, which was an awesome value even at the time. I mean, now I can't even imagine that three figures for ten dollars. But um, you know, they were repacks, but uh, it was a good way if you were just starting your collection to you know get several figures for a really low price. Yeah, and I like I like how they they advertise it as the commemorative DVD collection. Yet they don't include the DVD. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And they they do that with the Blu-rays and with the digital and yeah, you know, with Clone Wars they did that as well. Yeah, um, yeah, and then there were okay, so there were also these, and I don't know if they're technically OTC, but that's how they're listed here. So Entertainment Earth had these uh, Clone Trooper four packs. These were a huge deal at the time. Um, so at that point we had only had really the super articulated clone trooper and it was, uh, that was really hard to find. I don't think I ever found that one at retail. So when entertainment earth picked them up as exclusives in these multi-packs, uh, that was a really exciting thing. And, uh, if you wanted to just army build, uh, you could buy four different sets and you could get your clean clone troopers, your colored clone troopers, or your clean clone troopers with battle damage, or your colored clone troopers with battle damage. So there were plenty of clones to go around with these. Yep, I totally remember these sets. I don't think I ever got them all. I think, um, I think I might have gotten the damaged versions of each, but not uh-huh. the clean. So sounds familiar yeah. to me. Yeah. So let's look at screen scenes. Um, screen scenes were these um, basically like movie moments. So. One of the ones that they fleshed out pretty well were these um, Jedi Council sets. So these are Mm -hmm. pretty neat. And, you know, another thing that we're never going to see again. But um, basically, you would get a few Jedi figures and uh, they would come with a couple of um, the Jedi Council chairs and then, you know, part of the the floor with the, you know, the very ornate design. Right. And uh, when you connected them all together... Um, you would have the entire uh, scene for the Jedi Council. And I think the first half of them were released in the Saga line, weren't they? Yes. Yeah, so you could get the other ones um, by finishing the uh, the OTC versions. And it uh, looks like these were 1999. Um, were these mainline releases as well? Um, I think they were. It, it, sounds, it sounds familiar. I don't recall being exclusive anywhere right uh, and then we have the cantina sets these ones were exclusive to kmart uh yeah back kmart. in 2000 i think 2003 they had released the walmart versions which was basically like one bar section with one alien now this time uh these were uh, three bar sections that you could connect together uh that also came with three different figures and they retailed at 19.99 which was uh, an amazing deal um, and there were two different sets. So the very first one had uh, the figures that I think were supposed to come out as part of those Walmart 
um, yep. bar sections. That's right. But then they canceled that wave. But I think a few of them got out maybe like in Canada or somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then I think you could even redeem some of the Jedi Master points from the Saga packaging <laughs> to get some of them online. One of the only promotions that it was valid for. Oh, I know, right? It's like they took forever to figure out what they were going to do with those Jedi Master points. It was just like, let's create these Jedi Master points and uh, one day down the road we'll figure out what it means. Right. Um, but yeah, so that very first set was awesome because we got Kid at Kikak. And to this day, it's a very simple figure. It's a very silly figure. It's basically a Praying Mantis in a hula dress. <laughs> but to this day, that is one of my favorite figures. Yep. And uh, she came packed with um, Dr. Evazon, who um, was basically, I think, the Power of the Force figure, right? With This time with articulated knees and uh, more of like a dirty looking wash. Yeah. They they really went all out with the with the deco for these like uh-huh. war especially I mean he looks like a he's super grubby <laughs> uh, and then there was also Wooer the uh, the bartender so this is the second time they released this figure um, but again this time he he's got that really like detailed like you know dark wash like applied to him so he looks very grimy he looks like he's been in the canteen a little bit too long <laughs> and um yeah it, it, he looks quite different if you stand both figures side by side they look very different yep uh and then there was also and i think this one was harder to find as i recall i don't know that i ever found this one personally but uh they did a second set for canteen and it still had the three bar sections um but this time it had three different figures so you had a repack of obi-wan um, with the, uh, I think, was this the freeze? No, not the freeze term. I think this was maybe like the, um, the flashback scene, Obi-Wan. Yes. Okay. So that was from Power of the Force. And then, um, Ponza Baba, I think was the, uh, the Walmart version, wasn't it? The Cantina Walmart version. Mm-hmm. And then this was the one time and we haven't had him again in the modern line, Blue Snaggletooth. Yep. That's, that was a, a great inclusion for that, for that set. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, that's that these sets go for for a little bit of money these days. Like if you look on eBay, like especially this one, I think they go for a little bit of money. Hmm. So it's, um, yeah, it it was really exciting to be able to get, you know, blue snaggletooth at the time. And I don't know when they're ever going to do blue snaggletooth again. But uh, if you're collecting the modern line, that's the only way you can get him. Nice. So collectible figures and cups. Uh, This was another one that they did over and over and over again around that time. Uh, These were usually, I think, and it says these were canceled. So maybe these didn't actually come out. But I know for like several of the lines during that era, they were doing these cups at Target, right? And they would come with a figure. Right. Yeah. So it says these were canceled. So I'm not sure if they ever made it out or not. But uh, these just look like basically the same thing. You had a cup with a figure and... There's Han Solo, Yoda, and Boba Fett. Uh, After that, we have vehicles. So um, that's one of the things they did with OTC. They focused uh, very heavily on the original trilogy, of course, because it was meant to tie in with the DVD release. So you had a lot of those classic vehicles uh, come back. These were like repaints of previously released uh, original trilogy uh, vehicles. So you had like the Millennium Falcon. I remember getting that one. And... Uh, it was basically the same as the Power of the Force 2 version, which I think was based off the vintage version. Right. And um, I think the paint was slightly different or something was slightly yeah. different about it. Yeah. And then you had the TIE Fighter. You had the X-Wing. Uh, and then you had uh, this one was really cool. Uh, you had the Sandcrawler. Uh, this was a uh, previews exclusive, I think. And the one time I ever saw it, it was at Hot Topic. Right. Um, so this is basically the vintage uh, sand crawler. They gutted it of all the electronics. They gave it a very detailed uh, paint scheme uh, on the outside, at least. And uh, they've never, other than the one that Disney did, you know, a year ago, they they've never done the sand crawler again uh, in a Hasbro release. Yep, I think I still prefer this one versus the the new one. Yeah, you know, I haven't gotten the new one yet. I don't know if I'm going to, but. I think I might agree. Like this one, you know, it's it's the Hasbro one. It's the Kenner one, really. And Mm -hmm. uh, it still looks really good, even though some of the paint on it just looks like it looks like they just took a brush and just did the same like thing all over it. Right. Um, But it's still a really detailed paint scheme. And I think it still looks really great. I keep it on the shelf because I think it still looks really good, even though it's a little small. Uh, It's still fun. And the packaging on this one is great. 
Uh, and then we have the Slave one. This one was another cool one. This was a Target exclusive and uh, it had really nice packaging. It was like a window box where you could you could turn the whole box around and see like the different angles of the ship. And uh, this was a repaint of the Slave one that was done for Attack of the Clones for Jango Fat. And uh, this one looks really nice and it has the 300th edition Boba Fett. Yeah, this was yeah, this was a good one. Like you said, the packaging was very it had like the best bin background or cloud city uh, skyline and uh yeah it was it was cool and the inclusion of that boba fett made it all all that better yeah yeah i I really like this one still i mean i know that they've updated this ship but if you want just like a smaller sized one without going to the one they did like in 2013 um i think this one still holds up okay on the shelf Mm -hmm. um and i think i got that one on clearance i want to say at target um, so let's see what else they had. So they also did like the X-Wing. They did the TIE Fighter. Um, and then there was the Y-Wing Fighter. This was a Toys R Us exclusive. So I don't know about you, but I've always really liked the paint scheme on this one. Yeah, this is one of the ones I don't recall seeing in stores. I had to get this one through eBay probably. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't I don't ever remember seeing that one at Toys R Us. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I remember. I mean, I may have at one point, but I mean, this was so long ago. But um, yeah, was this paint scheme based on anything? Because I know it's not accurate to A New Hope. I don't know if it was maybe like a concept or a comic or... Based on the notes here, it says it was based on the expanded universe of one of the action fleet vehicles, but... Yeah, um, okay. Well, that yeah, I see that now when you click on that. Yeah, so I guess maybe that's where they got that paint scheme from. Either way, I think it's a really nice, it's like red, white, and blue, kind of. Right. So that's a really nice uh, paint scheme, I think. And it's got, uh, it's got, does, is that droid, did that, in, did that did that come with it? I don't remember. Yeah, I think it's built permanently in. fixed. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's built in. That's, that's still a really cool looking um, Y-Wing. Uh, other than vehicles, uh, let's see. Uh, what else is there in this line? I think that's about it. So they also did, um, okay, the Canadian packaging. That's what I was talking about earlier. If we click on that, you can see the the starburst look. It actually looks pretty cool. I don't like it quite as much, but it actually looks kind of cool. Did they use that same kind of background for, like, the star tours? Uh, I think they did when they were doing, like, the blue carded Mm -hmm. figures. Yeah, yeah um 12 inch figures so these were also i think classified as vintage original trilogy collection so um they did boba fett luke skywalker and stormtrooper and uh these recreated i think to an extent the uh the vintage packaging i don't know if it was 100 percent or if it was was it slightly bigger maybe yeah i think um like the original ones they had like that big fold out tab kind of deal which these don't Uh uh-huh but uh yeah these were still in a special special box with the with the foil wrap right yeah these were still really nice like i thought i've always thought that like the packaging on these like they have really good shelf presence Mm -hmm. yeah because you get a sizable figure obviously but you also get you know a really nice vintage style package with them and um yeah they do look really cool on the shelf so um Luke Skywalker was always kind of a weird one because it looks like he's wearing lipstick or something. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of a funny looking figure, yeah. but um, <laughs> he's like smiling. And he's really happy. He looks like something out of Robot Chicken, really. <laughs> he looks like the bad CGI for uh, <laughs> Superman. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Um, so there was that one. Um, there was also the Stormtrooper, which uh, they've done better Stormtroopers um, since then, I think. But um, I mean, for the time, it wasn't it wasn't terrible. And um, let's see, they also did Boba Fett. So Boba Fett was one that had two variations. So uh, the first one had like a blue outfit, right? And yep. this was That's a weird one. one. I have. Okay, this was a weird one because I remember seeing it in the store the first time and I was like, why does he look like that? It, it just seemed yep. strange. But then they, I guess either they corrected it or, you know, they just changed it, but they released it later with a more like film accurate look mm-hmm. to him. I don't know that I ever saw the updated version in stores. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall either. 
And then they also did Chewbacca. And I think Chewbacca was maybe like a KB toy exclusive or, or was he a mass release? I don't recall on that one. The, uh, I don't remember ever seeing it. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, he's not here in the archive, unfortunately, but, um, yeah, no, I do have this one. I like this one a lot because I think they reused this figure for Revenge of the Sith and they just repainted it, gave him a different bowcaster. Um, hmm. but yeah, no, it's, it's another one that it just looks really cool on the shelf. Cause it's, it's a pretty nice looking figure really. Um, but then, you know, the packaging of course is, is a big part of, you know, what makes these special. Uh, other than that, um, there's role play. So obviously they did electronic lightsabers. They did those, those were huge and they still are, I guess, pretty big. Um, and, um, a few miscellaneous things. Uh, okay. So the carry cases, uh, these were Walmart exclusives. I know that they had both the C-3PO and the Darth Vader carry case. Um, and yeah, so the Darth Vader carry case came with, uh, Boba Fett and Stormtrooper figures. Right. And it looks like these were actually some of the better figures I want. Or was this the Comtech Stormtrooper? Um, let's see. That one was kind of a kit bash. Okay. Yeah, it, it looks Yeah, cuz it's yeah. got the slot in the back for a, the the sand trooper. Ah, okay. Yeah, that is a unique one. Yeah, you're right. And then uh the Boba Fett, which was another repack once again. Uh and then C3PO um Okay, C-3PO came with Chewbacca and Han Solo. And I think, I don't remember if it was 3PO or Darth Vader, but uh, it was one of them that I remember going to a Walmart at one point, because it looks like they were both Walmart exclusives, and they just had like a mountain of them at checkout. <laughs> yeah, so... It, yeah, there's... I never did pick up the C-3PO one, um, probably because I, I recall the, the VAC Metal one from the original release and this one with it's just kind of i, I don't even know what color to call that <laughs> it's just not appealing yeah <laughs> you're totally right i mean right. it's gold but it's just not yeah I, you're right i can't even pinpoint what color that is it's like gosh oh i don't know it's almost like um like a honey Dijon sort of color. <laughs> yeah, it's mustard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honey mustard or something. Um, but yeah, th those carry cases are pretty cool. I think especially the Darth Vader, uh, you know, is a pretty neat looking thing. Um, and then, okay, so they did buddies. All right. Um, these are big during oh, Power of the Force. And uh, I guess they brought them back for OTC time frame. Um, yeah, these were kind of, I think, inspired by the whole Beanie Baby craze of the late 90s. Right. The other one that I remember quite a bit was the uh, Ask Yoda. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, the reason that this one sticks in my mind is I feel like every time I went to KB Toys, like, the lips on this one were ripped. <laughs> People just could not leave them alone, I guess. <laughs> I yeah. can imagine, yeah, just kids putting their fingers in his mouth or something and just... Yeah. I mean, the likeness is pretty good on yeah. it. I mean, <laughs> considering what it is but yeah yeah it is i think my grandmother found several of them on clearance because i'm pretty sure i have one at my parents house somewhere um so yeah they're that's, definitely uh, abused oh yeah they they saw a lot of abuse every time i saw it in the store i felt like they were yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny how they they kept them on the shelf after all that um but yeah i think um okay they have monopoly here in the archive too i'm pretty sure i have this version of monopoly as well so, yeah yeah that was a pretty cool you know star wars monopoly um but i think that pretty well covers it unless you can think of anything else from the otc line that we're missing no i mean it's it's there was a lot like you said there was a lot of stuff to cover uh, you know for the different groups of figures plus the vehicles and and everything else so it was a pretty well-rounded line mm -hmm. for the, yeah. it, for the short period that it lasted yeah, it, it was. And um, again, I think some of the best figures that, that they've done were, were, you know, in this in this uh, very brief line, particularly the POTC era of the line. Um, so, Jason, I want to get into our top five favorite figures from OTC slash VOTC slash POTC. <laughs> um, so I'll let you go first. Um, name your top five uh, figures from this line. Um, 
well, it, we probably pro- uh, covered it when we were talking, but those first f- four figures for the OTC line with, it was like the next kind of evolution in the figures with the, the swappable parts for the Luke, you know, being able to separate the Yoda and combine them. Um, like I said, the, the, the spirit Obi-Wan really was an attractive figure for its time. Uh-huh. Um, so I think all of those figures, plus the R2 being able to connect their bases and make a little scene of just those figures. Those were my favorite part of this line. Um, and then I mentioned it when we got to the transitional assortment that mm. uh, that Padme with her pearlescent mm. gown and her little globe that separates. I, I, we've never received that figure again. And um, obviously Padme had a ton of different outfits and it was nice to get this particular one from the end of yeah. The Phantom Menace. So I think those those are my core, f- core five uh, for the line. Very nice. Um, so for me, uh, I don't have any from the VOTC line on my list. I was kind of close to putting Chewbacca on there, but yeah, you know, we've seen that figure several times over over the year, many times over over the years. Right. So, um, so the first one I have here, uh, in no particular order, is uh, the Luke Skywalker Dagobah training. Uh, for all the reasons uh, you mentioned and and I talked about earlier, you know, it being basically like you said, a, a new evolution of figures at that point. Um, it had the swappable parts. It was uh, very nicely sculpted, nicely detailed. Had that really awesome base, and just the way that they had it packaged. You know, you could get it. You know, in the two configurations, um, the two of which uh, I thought the handstand version was. You know, if you wanted to get it carded, that was probably the way to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that one. Uh, I also have uh, Greedo on my list. Um, again, I think that the way they repainted that Greedo is very film accurate. Uh, they obviously did a more articulated version of Greedo in, uh, a couple years later, but, uh, I still feel like this one just because of the coloration just, just looks awesome. Um, after that, I have, uh, Slime Moore. We talked about Slime Moore and how she looks, um, you know, really great. She's really nicely sculpted, nicely painted. Uh, I have um, Padme also, like you, celebration ceremony, uh, and uh, I just love the outfit. I, I just think that it lo- it looks incredible, uh, just the the pearlescent look to it, and it's it's really detailed. They they just don't do things like that anymore. And uh, finally, I have Cantina Alien Mayo because you know he's just weird and he's creepy and um, he's great. I mean, he's, he's everything you would want in a Cantina alien action figure and more. So I, I want to see more figures like that. And he still holds up after all this time. So yeah, those are my top five. Nice. Well, my friend, it's been fun reminiscing about one of the coolest times in Star Wars toy collecting, uh, which at this point was already 15 years ago. Isn't that crazy? Oh, it ages us. Doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Gosh, that was so long ago. Um, so you, you know what they say: time flies when you're collecting, or maybe it, maybe it's just me that says that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, it certainly does. <laughs> well, Jason, as always, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thanks so much for visiting with me here in the cantina, and uh, let's do it again sometime. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. The original trilogy collection uh, it, it's it's wild to think back 15 years ago to what that toy line was like and yeah such a fun chat with jason uh be sure to check him out he works really hard he puts out some great uh collecting star wars news content on yakface.com i will throw links in the show notes uh, also to their facebook instagram and twitter pages so give them a follow as we head into the fall months with lots of new Star Wars uh, television and film content on the way. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of collecting and toy news on the way as well, so no doubt they'll cover that on yakface.com. If you aren't already, subscribe to The Place It All Started, the Victoria's Cantina YouTube channel where I review new toys and showcase retro toys from the past. You can also follow us for news and updates on Facebook by looking up Victoria's Cantina toy photography on Instagram at Victoria's Cantina and a constant drip of toy related and other random and nonsensical tweets on Twitter at Vic's Cantina. 
If you're so inclined, we are on Patreon. Gain greater access to Victoria's Cantina by becoming a Patreon Cantina patron. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll help to keep the show going and also get exclusive content such as access to a private Twitter feed, early access to toy reviews, and behind the scenes featurettes. And if you can't, but you still want to help us out, one of the easiest and most helpful things you can do is leave us a review over on Apple Podcasts. It only takes a minute, so hit that five-star rating and leave a note stating why you enjoy the show. It'll make us more visible on iTunes and help others to find our show. As always, I'm Victoria, and no matter where you're listening out in the galaxy, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Cantina Chatter Podcast. <laughs>